All right, so I'm preaching on what I've titled uh, Dominion Through Prayer and Fasting. Dominion Through Prayer and Fasting. Praise God. We've been dealing on this issue of dominion. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you speak expressly to us this morning. Father, I submit myself like the choir declared this morning, I am yours. If you want to say anything this morning, Lord, speak it through my lips. And let your people be transformed by your word. Let nations be transformed. Let minds be renewed. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus shine upon hearts. And let everyone that hear this message be changed completely. The Bible says, as we behold you as in a glass... The Bible says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. And so, Father, this morning, speak, Lord. Speak like you spoke in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 to the end of Genesis 1. Father, speak expressly in Jesus' name and the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. We've been dealing on the issue of dominion. Somebody shout dominion. Look at your neighbor, say, you have the dominion mandate. Oh, say it like you are alive. You have the dominion mandate. Now say it to yourself, I have the dominion mandate. All right. The Bible says, God said, let us make men in our what? Image. And after what? Our likeness. And let them do what? Have dominion. He said, God said, let's make men in our image. I told you that the word image there means that God made you and me in his DNA. The nature of God. You have God's nature. You see, there are two kinds of people in existence today. It is those with the nature of Satan or the Adamic nature and those with the nature of God. If you are not born again, you don't have the nature of God. Because the first time you were born, you were born into a sinful world. You were born into the mistake of Adam, the sin of Adam, the nature of Adam. And that's why the Bible says that we have a second Adam who is Jesus Christ. Now, if you have not run into the second Adam, I promise you, you are going to hell. The, I'm not threatening you. Unfortunately, if you don't know the second Adam, if you don't have a relation, if all your relationship is with the first Adam, you will, you're going to hell. And so the second Adam is who? Come on, talk to me. Who is the second Adam? Jesus Christ. That's why he came to redeem us. The redemption process was a process to get us born into the second Adam. Because the first time we were born, we were born in the who? The first Adam. And the Bible tells us that all, how many? How many? Have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so, when we are now born again, that's why Jesus used that word born again. Remember when Nicodemus asked Jesus, shall I go back into my mother's womb? Jesus said, no, this is a different kind of birth. You were born before, but you need to be born again. And now this birth is by the Spirit of God. You are going to be born when you receive Christ, you receive the seed of God. And so the second Adam brought us back into God's dominion. Remember, the dominion mandate is for all. It's for who? All humanity. When God said, let us make men in our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over every creeping thing and all that. Every, that dominion mandate was given to all men. So, but now, if you notice, because Adam and Eve sinned, everyone born into this world, now when Adam and Eve sinned, we lost that mandate. So the mandate that the world is using that has given them the kind of dominion they have is the flesh mandate. The mandate that they doing through intellect which is study, get intelligence and do things. But you and I are different. 
we have a mandate that affects that has affected our spirit because when you got born again your spirit was reborn somebody say my spirit was reborn so i now have a connection with god i can now relate to god the reason why god actually made men was because of fellowship hello church god wanted people that he will relate with god is a very relational being and that's why if you are a very unfriendly person you are not like god something is wrong with that equation when you are a child of God, you should want to relate to people. Uh -uh, you are not hearing me this morning. God is a relational God. He wants us to relate with him. The reason he created us in his image and in his likeness was so that he can relate to us at his level. Are you here, church? At his level. So when, when God and I relate, we're relating like God is like me. You're not hearing me, church. That's why he created us. It's unfortunate that men, men does not understand this. I, I, I mean, no man, listen, when I married my wife, I didn't marry her to give birth to children. I married her for relationship. Uh, are you here? Because if it was just to give birth, as soon as David is born, I'll tell her, okay, go to hell or go to somewhere else. And I move on to somebody else. But I married her for what? For relationship. I, I need somebody that I can talk to. I can confide in. I can, that can pray for me. I pray for the person. I tell my secret. Receives counsel from the person. Give the person counsel. We share life together. That's exactly what God wanted to have with us. And that's why today the church is regarded as the bride of Christ. Because it was for what? Relationship. God is a relational God. And so th that's the reason for God giving, at least creating man. The first basic reason. Then obviously we can now begin to talk about the multiplying, replenish the earth and all that. But it was for relationship. The you will notice that in Genesis, the Bible will say that God will step into the garden in the cool of the day. What was he coming to do? To fellowship with Adam and Eve. Just for fellowship. And that's why if you don't understand that, you will think that prayer is just to ask God for things. Prayer is not for asking God. Asking God for things is the least thing in prayer. Prayer is actually for relationship. It's for fellowship. When I come into the place of prayer, I begin to sing. You know, like the, the, you know, my son was singing this morning. You were awesome in this place, mighty God. You know, you, you begin to worship him and you and him begin to fellowship. And then as you fellowship, he starts telling you secrets. He starts giving you revelation. He starts showing you things to come. That's why a child of God that relates to God, things can take you on our ways. Uh, your father sees all things. The Bible calls him the omniscient God. He is all-knowing. He knows everything. Before you enter a flight, he knows whether it's a safe flight. Uh -uh. Okay, you're not hearing me. Before you buy a house, he knows whether it's a good house or not. He knows about your business. He knows whether you will get the person you are going to meet in Pretoria for a tender will give you the tender. And so... Now here, as you talk to him, he talks to you. It's a fellowship thing. And so this is what I want to deal with us today. Because many of us do not understand the, the reason for prayer. And that's why we don't pray. Church, prayer is so important. Jesus said in Mark 11, 17, he says, My house shall be called what? A house of prayer by all nations. He said, but you have turned it to a den of thieves. Do you know that the most important meeting in any church is prayer meeting? And guess what? That is the least attended. It's the least attended. Concert, everybody will be here. Prayer, half or not even one quarter, one quarter will be here. Why? Because we think 
we don't know that prayer is fellowship with God. He said, my house, he didn't say my house shall be called house of praise. He didn't say my house shall be called It's a house of prayer. It says, and he taught them, saying unto them, it is written, my house shall be called what? Of all nations, the house of prayer. Another version says, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. For all people, all nations. Meaning that what he's saying is, prayer can change people. Prayer can change nations. You are not hearing me, church. One of the reasons for failure today in our day, failure of marriages, failure of businesses, failure of churches, failure of families, failure of finances, failure in every area is because of lack of prayer. Because what prayer does, prayer covers, how many of you have heard the word prayer covering? Prayer covers you. When you pray, there is like a smoke. The Bible is a smoke of, like a glory that covers you when you are in prayer. Anywhere where there is no prayer, Satan always wreaks havoc. Are you here? A prayerless Christian is inviting Satan to wreak havoc in his life. Everywhere you see Satan displaying all manner of things is because people are not praying. When you start praying, Prayer gives you what we call open heavens. Somebody shout open heavens. In your life, all manner of issues start coming up. You give Satan access to just cause problems in your life and walk away as though he didn't do anything. But when you are prayerful, when you stay in prayer, you, you, you are covered. Any church that is not covered in prayer will always not excel. Any family that is not covered in prayer, divorce is very close. Are you here, church? Prayer is so critical. You and I need to pray. We must understand the importance of prayer. The importance of prayer. When you don't have a prayer covering over your life, whether from you or from somebody else, Satan will always make a mess. I'm telling you. Somebody say, but you know, we always experience havoc from the devil. That's why we stand in prayer against all our sorts of wickedness. Because Satan can manipulate anybody. <laughs> you know, Bible says in uh, is it 2 Timothy 1, 2 verse 1. He said, uh, brethren, I think it, it was, God was talking to them about prayer. I will read my scripture just now. I'm just trying to, you know, introduce my message. It says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for who? Look at your neighbor say, God commanded you to pray for all men. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you, every day you wake up, Lord, give me tea, give me car, give me house, give me uh, bread, give me rice. Uh -uh. God says, pray for how many men? This is God telling you that you are first of all, you should pray for all men. And then he says, next verse, for kings and those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Next verse, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our God, of God our Savior, who will have all men, how many men? To be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He says, listen, when you see people come here to give their life to Christ, every Sunday when we make altar call, it is because of prayer, not the preaching. You know, the Bible says, uh, I think it's in uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4. it says, For the God in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds 
of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus, who is the image of God, should shine in them. So what does Satan do? Blind people's minds. He, Satan is a blindfolding spirit. That's why they don't get saved. If you are talking to somebody about being saved and you are not praying for them, you are wasting your time. Listen, don't ever talk to somebody about Jesus that you have not prayed to Jesus about. No, that's not the order. Pray for them first. When I make altar call now, people will come and give their life to Christ because from 1 a.m., I've been praying for them. You didn't hear me. Are you here, church? Because the light will switch on. That's why we pray for our leaders. We pray for President Cyril Ramaphosa. This, in fact, as I was in the U.S., one of the nights I was praying, around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., and the Lord said to me, these two nations, America and South Africa, are in a season of transition. And he says, son, I want you to uphold these two nations in prayers because a lot will be determined in this world by these two nations. I heard it from the Lord as I was in prayer. So, you see, these, these seven days, I want us to pray. I want us to pray. We are in a transition. Who you select as pray? You know, let me tell you, if your life is in order, you pray for yourself, if you have open heaven over you, you are still at a risk. Let me tell you why. Satan uses authorities above you to torment you. Even when your life is in order. You see your father, your husband, your president, policemen, the law court, all these authorities that are above you, Satan can manipulate them against you. And that's why you must pray for them. The amen is cast in this church this morning. Should I go back to America? Satan will use them against you. That's why you need to pray for them. South Africa is like an aeroplane. It's like an aeroplane that I used to travel to America. If I'm going to America, I don't just say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over Felix. No. Father, I plead the blood over the captains. Over the plane. Because if the plane crashed, when I plead the blood over me, I will still crash. Uh -uh, you didn't hear me. You know, the Bible talks about, I think it's uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and do what? And pray. And turn away from their wicked ways. What will happen? I will hear from heaven. And I will heal their land. So that's why prayer is so important. That we pray for kings, we pray for the nation. Because that's the only way you and I are going to have peace. The leader we choose, listen. <laughs> a nation enjoys peace by the prayer and by the obedience of who they choose as their leader. If you're going to have peace, it is leaders that will make it happen. <laughs> you know, some of you don't know what liberty means until you go to nations where you are not allowed to worship publicly. You have no idea what liberty we are enjoying today. You and I can just come to church. Hallelujah. You know, you all of us see how we are dancing. People are dan jiving like this. You, there are countries you jive like this. If from the jiving, you will go to prison to jive the rest. Are you here? <laughs> have you jived in prison before? You will jive it for the first time. Why? Because they, they don't have that freedom. That's why church in South Africa, we need, to be, we need to keep our country in prayer. Because you see, when Satan starts, he starts deteriorating, things start going bad and bad and bad. If we keep electing the same crazy human beings, they will just keep deteriorating things for us. That's how they do. Look at the president of America. I don't know if you heard what he did on Easter Sunday. Who heard about it? The guy turned Easter Sunday. To, he said they should no longer call it Resurrection Sunday. It is now the transgender day. 
you know, I said to my younger brother and his wife, I said, anybody that votes for Biden, <laughs> I know if they hear this message, they might pull this thing out of social media, but I don't care. Any Christian that votes for that man, is it, God will be against you. Listen, our Christianity is based on the resurrection of Jesus. The Bible says, if Christ be not raised from the dead, our faith is what? Futile or vain. The basis of our Christianity, the reason why when you hear, see me, when people come out here to give their life to Christ, I say they believe, I, I, I received Jesus as the Lord of my life, I believe that he died for me, and he what? Rose from the dead. If you don't believe those two things, you are not saved. I don't care if you can jump up here and down, fall under the anointing, you are not saved. Until you confess that Jesus came in the flesh, died and rose on the third day, you are not saved. That's the basis of our belief. And now some human being turns Resurrection Sunday to transgender and gay day. The world is in trouble. The world is what? That's why if you are the type of person that is making this world your home, I feel sorry for you. This is not my home. I don't want to be here forever. Oh, no. Oh, no. This place is a mess. I want to go to heaven. Now, I'm serious. Sometimes I look at some of these things and I say, Jesus, please just come. What is all this? All kinds of mess. Now, we know in our nation today, two men can get married and get marriage certificate from home affairs. In fact, one of my daughters sent me something now about some bill and all that, you know, regarding this transgender and gay and L, all the alphabet people. Are we together, somebody? It's crazy. Then we have another politician who says, you know what, when I come into office, I'm going to legalize prostitution. Why, are, why is it that politicians are just looking for evil things against the word of God to do? Why? Why can't we have a... Pol Look at Kenya today. A politician that will stand up and say, eh -eh, it is not right for a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. Why can't we have such politicians in our country? That's why we need to pray. Because if we continue like this, a day will come when they will tell you you can't worship. I went to Canada to preach. I was in Montreal to preach. As I arrived, the pastor came to my room, had a meeting with me. You are welcome to Canada, blah, blah, blah. He says, listen, I know you Africans, you are very bold in what you say. He said, please, whatever you preach, don't ever mention gay in our church. They will close down this church. I say, eh? Wow. The first preaching I got was from the pastor. I can't mention it at all. We don't want South Africa to get there. And what is the plan? Satan wants to stop multiplication of human beings. Because he knows God loves people. Two men can never give birth to a child. I don't care what you think, whatever. Two women can never give birth to a child. It's all in the plan of the devil. And that's why we need to pray. Somebody say, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. And not just prayer, commanding prayers. Now our election is here. We need to start intense prayer. Otherwise, they will sell this nation while you are awake. These people that are ruling us, they will sell you for a piece of bread. While you are awake. Are you here? Unfortunately, nobody is bold enough to say these things. We say they, come, they will come after you. Yes, that is true. But I said to myself, I'm ready to die for the cause of Christ. Amen. Are we here? I, 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 I don't understand what is going on in the world today. This world is filled. The kind of mess that is going on is just crazy. And so, our president needs prayer covering. He needs prayers. 
Because Satan is trying so hard to influence these people. To tell them what to do. Making laws that don't make sense. Another one says if he comes in, he will chase every Zimbabwean home, put them on a bus. And I mean, it, some people just talk as though their brain is not working. Honestly speaking. Are we together? Listen. From the Bible days, there have always been migrations. <laughs> uh, you don't believe me. I think it was in uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 1. Let me see. Where did, where did Jeremiah talk about the, the migration of the children of Israel? He said, now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive and to the priest, to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive from Jerusalem to where? To Babylon. Somebody say migration. This will always happen. You will have foreigners among you. You need to say amen. amen. You will always have them. They will contribute to the economy. Listen, as much as people are talking bad of Zimbabwe, Nigerians, they are Nigerians and Zimbabweans that are contributing to the economy of this nation. Amen. That is the gospel truth. Amen. I will deport everybody. Deport them to where? Deport. Many of the people, because if you read the scripture, God even said, maybe keep reading. Hey, somebody is distracting me. Is there any xenophobic person here? It says, and after that, Jeconiah, the king, and the queen, go to verses, verse 4. Move to verse 4. Quickly. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, unto them that are carried away captives into South Africa, whom I have caused to be carried away from wherever country to South Africa. Keep going. Build ye houses. Dwell in them. Plant gardens. That means plant businesses. Eat the fruit of them. Keep going. Keep going. Take your wives. That's why I took Bulelwa. I am obeying God. God didn't say go back to Israel and marry. He didn't say go to Nigeria. He said take your wives from where you are. He said beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and for your daughters and to your to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Are you reading Bible? Don't say it who? <laughs> and then look at what he said in verse 7. He says, seek the peace of South Africa where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof you shall what? Have peace. That's why you must never wake up a day without praying for South Africa. I don't care whether you are from Zimbabwe, Malawi, Swaziland, Namibia. Pray for what? South Africa. This nation needs our prayers. This is the America of Africa. You are not hearing me. <laughs> this nation is the Amer That's why Satan wants these two nations. He wants them. I'm telling you, the day Satan can mess up this land, Africa is finished. <laughs> Believe me, I know what I'm saying. That's why we need to pray. Well, let me read. Oh, I've been reading Bible, but that one was not part of my preaching. All those ones are just for some of you who have been asking questions. Isaiah 45 and verse 11. Somebody say, I will pray. Who is going to join the fast and prayer? Let me, if you, uh, hey. Some people are not raising their hand. I asked a question from this altar. God is asking, who is going to join the prayer and fasting? All right, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 45, let me go into my message. Apostle, are you saying all these things you have been saying? No, I haven't. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me go into my message, please. 
All right, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 11. Dominion through prayer and fasting. Thus saith the Lord, I want us to pray at the end of that. I really want us to pray for South Africa. There is, this, this nation is on a transit. We, we are about to move to another level. And may that not, another level not become a disaster because of our lack of prayer. This week, we're going to face intense prayer for South Africa. Intense prayer for this nation. You see, church, it's important that you pray for the nation. You know, any nation you don't pray for does not yield you good. You know that. Somebody is not letting me go to my message today. You see, if you work for a company, pray for that company. Pray for the CEO. Because, you see, when you pray for it, it's a law in the spirit. Because of your sacrifice, God will always use that company, they will always favor you. How come when they want to retrench, you are number one on the list? It's because you are not praying. If you pray for a company, they will never retrench you. Are, are you hearing me, church? Listen, the reason why this country is yielding me her best is because I pray for South Africa every day. I was in the United States. I prayed for this nation three hours. I told you guys I was, I was on a fast for three days praying for South Africa. And one wicked woman came into my office with nine men and asked me a question. Why do you want this nation from me? Because I was praying for the nation. Apostle, I don't understand why you are prospering. It's because you are a pastor. It's not. They have broke pastors. Ah. <laughs> you are not hearing me. Broke. Like broke pastors. It's not because... And every day they wake up, they complain about South Africa. Me, I'm, I don't come. I, a pastor, you see, a South African man of God came to my office. He said, you know South Africans don't give. Hey. I, I had goose pimples when he said it. I said, not in our church. How do you open your mouth to say that South Africans don't give? Man, that is a lie from hell. If they don't give in your church, it's because you are not praying for them. If you are praying, they will give. Listen, I don't even want to share testimonies. Please, let me, so that people don't say I'm bragging. Listen to me, church. Pray for your nation. All right. Let me go to my message now. Thus saith the Lord, Isaiah 45 and verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons. Okay, let me finish reading. And concerning the work of my hands, what do you do? Command ye me. God is saying there is two kinds of prayer that you must pray as a believer. Number one is ask of me. 50% of your prayer is ask God. But the 50%, God say command. That's where we are failing as God's people. We are not commanding. Command means use the authority. You know I told you that a mandate has three things. Number one, assignment. Number two, authority. And number three, provision. Last week, last Sunday. Then God says, listen, I've, see, God has ability what does God have? Unto him who is able to do exceeding, come on, abundantly, come on, above all that you ask or think. God has ability. But what God has given to you and me is authority. And God's ability will never be released without authority. God never does anything on the earth unless man commands it, commands it to do so. So this is where we, many of us are sending 100% of our prayer to heaven. And that's why they don't have answers. 50%, he says, concerning my sons, ask me. But when it comes to the work of my hands, money, houses, cars, position, offices, whatever job opportunity, whatever it is that is the work of my hands, what do you do? 
command. Look at your neighbor, say command. Look at your neighbor, say issue command. He said you should command. Don't just ask me, Lord, give me a job. Uh -uh. Command the job. That's why you don't say in South Africa there is no employment. It's a lie. Command your own employment. You are not hearing me, somebody. You can't say South Africa economy is bad. Command your own economy to be good. While others are struggling, you'll be living lavishly. Command. Because the authority has been given to you. That's what God did. When he made us in his image and in his likeness in Genesis 1.26... Maybe let's read it. Put it for us on the screen. Let everybody read it. One, you read it out loud. Genesis 1, 26. One, two, go. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the face of the earth. Why did God decide that he wants to make you and me in his image and in his likeness? You know what that means? You are exactly like God. As Jesus said in, uh, John, look, look for John 5, 19. John 5, 19. Just let's pause on this one. Give me John 5, 19. The, give me this in the Amplified. Let's simplify it in the Amplified Version. Please, turn it to Amplified Version. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you most solemnly, and I tell you, the Son is not able to do nothing of himself, or of his own accord, but he is able to do only what, what? He sees the Father doing. For whatsoever the Father does is what? What the Son does in the same way in his turn. So what God is saying is, everything I do is exactly how you should do it. Then we now know Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. Nothing changed. That's why you can be a Christian and have the Holy Ghost and nothing changes in your life. Because many people are complaining, Lord, I'm born again. I gave my life to Christ. I am a child of God, but yet I'm struggling. It is not God's fault. Because you only ended Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. You need to shift to verse 3. Let there be light. You need to move. Look at your neighbor say shift to verse 3. Yeah, you better shift. Stop complaining. Shift to verse 3. The word let there is not uh, I, I'm, I'm praying. Uh -uh. The word there is command. Let that, that is I'm seeing chaos, I'm seeing void, I'm seeing darkness. The spirit is moving, nothing is changing. Let there be. Let there be light. Let there be finances. Let there be money. Let there be job. Let there be opportunity. I wake up every morning and say, let there be opportunity for me today. Let there be light for me today. Let there be revelation for me today. Let there be healing for me today. Let there be deliverance for me today. I don't stop in verse 2. You issue commands. That's why many of us are complaining that we, our prayers are not answered. There is no husband. Issue command. You husband of mine that have been determined from the foundation of the earth. Wherever you are, I summon you now. I command you now. Come into my life. Come, let our pathway meet somewhere along the line. Issue command. And stop complaining. Issue command. Because unless we issue command, nothing changes you look at that scripture if you keep reading genesis chapter 1 verse 1 everything is let there be and god said let this let this look at verse 11 verse 11 he said verse 11 and god said let the earth 
bring forth what? Grass. Let it bring forth. Listen, there are two earths. The earth you live in and you are made of earth. One of the prayers we are going to pray after this service is, Lord, anything that is inside me that should bless my life, let there be. Let it come forth. It must come out. I don't know what is hiding inside you. Church, you can be sitting beside a Bill Gate right here in this church. But unfortunately, they don't know that inside them is another bigger company than Microsoft. They have no idea. You can be sitting beside a president who does not know that he's a president. You can be sitting beside a global apostle. You can be sitting beside a Benny Hinn right here in this auditorium. But because he cannot issue command, he's waiting for people to make him. Uh -uh. In this kingdom, people don't make us. Are, are you hearing me, church? Let them come forth. Whatever God, has, the Bible says we have this treasure where in earthen vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of man. We have treasure in earthen, earthen. And God spoke to the earth, earth bring forth. What is inside you that needs to be brought forth? I remember as a young Christian, I was 23 years old. I just gave my life to Christ. I, was, I told you guys I was born with a sickness, a disease that my father took me to every Sangoma that be. I remember one day they took me to a river at 12 midnight. Hi, as a young child, I was young, very little, because my father was looking for help everywhere. I was his first son, or I'm his first son. He has tried the church where they go to, I don't want to mention name. Then he resorted to Sangomas. Nothing changed. And then one day I gave my life to Christ. The day I got born again, that disease stopped. Instant. I'm not joking. Instant. It stopped. And I remember I went to a redeemed camp. There's a place called Redemption Camp in Nigeria. Uh, by Pastor E.A. Adeboye. I went there for eight days. And I was there prayer and fasting. No food. I was drinking water. And I would wake up in the morning, lay hand on my belly. Bragada. Everything you have put inside this body, let them manifest. Whatever you have buried in my body, every gift, talent, potential, every giftings, whatever it is you are put in here, let them come forth. I pray that prayer eight days. Today, look at where I am. The gift is flying me around nations. 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 I was in America one time. I think it was when I went to preach for uh, Pastor Le Apostle Leslie Osei, um, uh, Dominic Osei, Leslie's husband. Uh, Prophetess Leslie Osei's husband. You know, as I, I, I got to the airport, the lady took my passport. She said, man, you are well-traveled. I said, Yeah. She said, what do you do? I said, I'm a preacher. I said, oh, okay. But you see, the reason I'm well-traveled is that the gift is speaking. People hear me from nations and invite me. I don't invite myself. I'll be going to America, I don't know how many times this year. By June, I'll be preaching in a conference. By October, in a conference. November, in a conference. I mean, when I, by the time the conference finished, I'm in Kenya, preaching in Kenya. From Kenya, I fly to the United States. Just like that. Flying everywhere. By what? What was inside? It, just, son, just imagine if I never prayed that prayer and what God has put inside me never manifested. I would be sitting in a taxi rank smoking Dhaka. You, you have no idea who you are sitting by. The day what is inside you shows up. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I know we think that the earth has resources. Uh, there is gold mines in South Africa. There is diamond. It was Mines Moreau, the late Mines Moreau, that said the re wealthiest place is not the gold mines of South Africa. Neither is it the diamond mines of Congo. Neither is it the oil mines, oil wells of Saudi Arabia and Nigeria. 
He said, but the wealthiest place on earth, planet earth today, is the graveyard. It is people who died without unleashing what God put inside them. And it is still happening in our generation. Many people are sitting down here with world-breaking, record-breaking books. What they call them in America, uh, bestsellers. I'm telling you, somebody here can sing a song that will give him or him millions, and yet he's sitting with, he's afraid. He's afraid. That's why you see me pull these people and say, hey, you must start. Because if Bongi doesn't start, others, she's their leader. A, 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 the Bible says the servant is not greater than the master. If Bongi doesn't start, all of them will be sitting there. Look at Sister Gugu. That's a, that's a bomb. How about, man, I'm telling you, when these people stand here, I'm thinking, some of the songs they sing, if the people that sang it hear them, they will be shot. How do you carry such anointing and no song released? Start writing. I told Bongi, I said, start, write as many songs as possible. Keep writing. And thank God you have an exposed father. So opportunities will come. I will go preach in America. I will say, like Benny Hinn does. When Benny Hinn came here to preach for us, he came with his own band. He came with his own singers. Are you hearing me, church? I'm getting there. Where I'm like a Benny Hinn. When I go preach, I take a Gugu with me and her husband. I take a Bongi and her husband. I take them with me and say, come. Before I preach, I will ask my speaker, let them sing first before I preach. And open the heavens for me. That's how it's supposed to be. But you see, we are sitting on these gifts and these talents. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. What is inside you that is not coming out? What is, let there be. Let the earth bring forth. Let Felix bring forth. What do I need to bring forth? You see, this is how the men of old operated. Hey, the prophets of old operated crazy. Hey, men like Moses. Ay, 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 ay. In Egypt, this man would just bring up flies from everywhere. Frogs from everywhere. Big darkness. One man, a human being like you. One day in a, Elisha, one crazy dude called Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 1. The Bible says he rose up and said, Thus saith the Lord, a barrel of meal shall be sold for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. And a, a, bar a, 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 a barrel of uh, barley shall be sold for one shekel. And the Bible said the hand of the man who's the, the king, Lord leans on, says even though God opens heaven, you don't understand. I have commanding authority. How dare you threaten that my word will not come to pass? How dare you think? You know, I, I just, you know, when I, when, I, when I read that scripture many years ago, I realized that the king never argued. Because the king knew <laughs> that where the word of the king is, there is power. And so he never said anything. It's only his servant that was stupid enough to say it will never happen. And Elisha said, listen, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. Did it happen or not? That's how the prophets of old, the men of old lived. They issued command. They look at the property, I want it. Property, I call you into my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's it, they walk away. That's a command. And guess what? Angels will go to work. That's what Jesus was teaching in Mark eleven twenty three. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say it shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you say. That's what he meant. He was saying that you can issue commands. It's not all these, uh, you know, all these Christians that confess positive. Mm -mm. There comes a time in your life when you go before God. First and foremost, you do the things that bring the Holy Ghost. Because there are things you must do to attract His presence. Either you pray in the Holy Ghost or you worship, worship Him. 
you begin to sing and you will notice that there is a presence around you, around your room. That is the point where you say, let there be. Let there be light. Let there be husband. Let there be money. Let there be cars. Let there be buildings. Let there be whatever you want and desire. So you must activate the Holy Ghost. Activate him. And then once you can feel his presence, that's how I get things done. That's how I get things done in my life and in this church. Issuing commands. Just release commands. Once I notice the presence of the Spirit. So I will, I will wake up in the morning and just begin to worship. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I thank you. Because that's what, that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus, what did Jesus do? He said, Father, I thank you that you hear at me. Just like, is that prayer? Uh -uh. Is that enough prayer to raise the dead? He was trying to invite the Spirit. Because worship brings the Holy Ghost. And then after that, he says, remove the stone. Lazarus, come forth! Whatever represents your Lazarus is coming forth today. <laughs> I say, whatever represents your Lazarus is coming forth today in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, don't, let me see. Let me talk to you, my sons and daughters in the spirit, in the Lord. Don't complain like the world. I don't, there is nothing like there is no job in South Africa, ever. Never. Oh no, there is no money in South Africa, never. People are making billions daily. I'm telling you, and they don't have two heads. Oh no. That's why you never, you don't see me talking against all these Oppenheimer, the Roberts. These guys, they are wealthy. They made their money. So you need to find your own wisdom to get to where these people are. Find your own wisdom. You can't be living anyhow, living carelessly, smoking darker, drinking up and down, and find that kind of wisdom. These guys, are, you'll be surprised that many of these billionaires don't drink alcohol. Uh -uh, you are not here. They don't smoke. But you, child of God, every day you are puffing cigarette, and you want the wisdom of God. It will never happen. Are you here, church? Don't blame. Listen. Can I say this, Lord? Uh, you know, us black South Africans, we should stop blaming the whites. We should stop blaming Indians. I am saying this by the Spirit of God. Don't blame anybody for where you are. I came into this country with 20 rents. How much? 20 rents. At one time, I owned 69 properties in South Africa. I came in here with how much? 20 rent without documentation. I got my documentation in the process. How dare you say nothing is working? Whose child are you? A child of God? Which God? If you are like your father made in his image, just go back to Genesis 1 <laughs> and just do what he did. Do exactly what he did. Let there be this. Let the, there be two great lights. One to rule the day. One to rule the night. He even created light to rule darkness. And you are that light. There's a song I heard on, 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 uh, 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 on what's that, TikTok. I am, I am fire. I am light. I am glorio, supernatural. I, I say, who is this again? Nigerians are always coming up with things. Jesus, these people, crazy human beings, man. Kai, man, that song is, man, as I was even listening to it, I, I became light and fire and supernatural. Ay, 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 ay. Man, I just heard that recently. Was it two days ago? I am fire, I am light. I don't, who sang it? Do you all know? Is it a popular guy? Eh? He's, he's new. Just like that. Now, look at it. He's in Nigeria. He sang, I am fire, I am light. 
I'm talking about him on the pulpit in South Africa. He doesn't know. That's what your gift can do. People will be talking about you in America. Why you are sleeping in South Africa? You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. That's what your gift must come out to. It must speak. I said it must what? Speak. Some of you have no idea who you are around today. If you know who you are, hey, the day you discover you, I, the day you discover you, how about the day you discover you? <laughs> what are you saying? Man, just know who you are. Know who you are. When you carry God's presence, you appear anywhere. Everything should begin to shift. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. I am fire. Somebody, I am light. Mm -hmm. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. I am fire. I am fire. Uh -huh. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. That's it. Keep singing that to yourself. Anywhere you show up, darkness will run. That's a serious confession. Listen, I listened to that song. It turned something in me because the guy understood something. That's why, you know, when people write song and just copy everybody, you go to, you know, just take one hymn from Colin, take one from Takindo, take one from Benjamin Dube, combine it and do it as a song. You are not serious. Come up with something nobody, what? I am fire. <laughs> I've never heard a song like that. How did that guy just wake up one morning and say, I am fire. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Are we here to church? Just like that. So you, you must know, when you know what you carry, something can come out from you that will change South Africa. I am not part of the people that complain. Of. <laughs> Never. If you see, see, when you look at me and, and you begin to envy me and talk nonsense about me, just, every day when I stand on this altar, I just tell you my secret. I th you need to hear me when I pray. You need to see me command. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the four wings of South Africa. I command money to come into my hands. This month alone, five people have, is it four or five people, have given me half a million. This, the month is not ended. Are you here? My friend, you better wake up. Oh. What did I say? Wake up! I will wake up in the morning. Father, I speak to the four wings of South Africa. Let every money that belongs to me, I summon them now. I command the people to bring it. I don't go anywhere. I go from house to my office. Office back home. Everything that comes, comes into my hands while I'm here. I don't go look for it. Are you here, church? Church, listen to me. I am talking to you from a God perspective. Stop complaining. This thing is in your hands. Wake up in the morning. Every opportunity that I have missed, I command you to be brought back into my life. What is it that you are looking for? Summon them. I call you into my life. I command. We are buying next door now. Property as a ministry. And I'm already commanding. It's in millions. Definitely. And I'm calling it to come. And you, don't be surprised. One day I will stand here and tell you, somebody just walked into my office, gave me 10 million. And then we'll buy it debt free so that our church will not become a nuisance. During conferences, cars are all over the place outside. With this big land we have. Yet cars are from here to... When Benihim came here to preach, cars were almost to Taba. We need space. So that we are not nuisance. Amen, somebody. So church, stop complaining like other people. I don't... I, eh. 
I'm not a complainer. All those were things. Jesus was in the wilderness. For goodness sake, he was with people for how many days? Three days. He realized, hey, these people have not eaten. You know what he said to Philip or Andrew? Who, who did he tell? Philip, he said, give these people to eat. Andrew said, immediately Andrew's mind went to salary. Because Andrew does not understand Genesis chapter 1. He says, 200 penny worth of bread will not feed these people. In fact, if you read other scriptures, it says, a year's wages. Just imagine. Jesus is talking about feeding 5,000. Somebody went to salary. Is that how you operate your life? Look at your neighbor and say, we don't live by salary. Oh yeah, please. Don't ever, listen, listen. The number one rule of prosperity is God is my only source. That's why if you lose your job, don't commit suicide. Because your job is not your source. Okay, I didn't hear an amen from here. Let me talk to these people. If you lose your business, don't kill yourself. That business is not your source. Number one rule in prosperity, God is my only. Who is your only source? God. I don't depend on anything at all. I can let go of anything as I am today. If God wakes me up and says, give that Bentley away, I will jump. The same way it came, I will fling it away. I remember years ago when we bought our, one of our properties that we bought, we walked in the way my late wife was in awe of that house. She loved it. When I saw the celebration, I said, woman, easy, easy, easy. Then I said to her, I said, baby, when I saw the way she was rejoicing, I said, baby, if God said we should give out this house today, this house is gone. Hey, her mood changed. Which kind of devil did I marry? <laughs> because, listen, as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing I should hold on to. No. My source is God. The giver can command me to give it away. You didn't hear me, church. The giver can command me to give it away. There are some of my daughters, they don't, they know. Some of them are here, particularly the widows. You don't tell, I would just call them once in a while, daughter, come into my office. Because as I was praying, God would just put them in my heart and say, bless this widow. They are here, they are hearing me. And I would just count out thousands and say, daughter, go take care of your family. One of my daughters, I called her, I said, who's a widow? I said, I don't see you in church, where are you? I said, come to my office. She came. And I gave her 10,000 rand. She was, she almost fell out of the chair. I mean, I don't say these things in the open because I, I, there are things I do in the secret that I get open reward. Are you hearing me, church? It's not everything we say. Because they are serving God, they love God. Unfortunately for some of them, in the process of time, their husband passed away. And so, however I can be a helping hand, I will do that. I will do that. Church, if you understand who you are, believe me, your complaint will be over. I really want us to pray this morning. There is something about today's service that some of you are going to issue commands concerning some things that have disappeared in your life for years. That the light of God will shine. So, hey, church, listen. You know, <laughs> there is something I do. One day, our key was missing. Key to the house. I remember a bunch of key. We looked for it everywhere. I mean, they searched the house, done everything. We couldn't find it. And I remember my late wife was in the kitchen. And I had just finished prayer. I just went somewhere in the kitchen and took out the key. She says, baby, did you hide this key? I said, we have been, she said, we have been looking for this key for the past one week. And you just walked in and just got it. You hid the key. I said, no, I didn't hide it. You know what I pray? I said, Father, I command light to shine on where this key is. As I walked into the kitchen, God said, walk to that, though behind the bread bin. 
As I move the bread bin, the key we have been looking for for one week is behind bread. You are not here. Some of you are going to pray. Light will shine on things you have lost. Some of the things that need to come back to your life, light will shine on them. You will command light to shine on that darkness today. So that you stop complaining. They, they, you see, life is easy when you know the laws of God. When you know the principles of God. Things are easy. Don't wait for people. Every, I can't depend on my father, depend on my mother to take care of me for the rest of my life. No! Wake up! Wake up. And begin to call light out of darkness. Begin to command things to come to be. Because that's how we operate. Jesus said to him, give them to eat. He said, 200 penny worth. <laughs> Jesus said, you don't understand. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey, I am light. Hey, I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey, I am light. Uh -huh. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Are you here? I am fire. Hey, I am light. Uh -huh. I am glory, oh. The supernatural. I am fire. I am fire. Mm -hmm. I am light. I am glory. Oh, the supernatural. So, so when Jesus now looked at him, he said, "You don't understand." <laughs> Jesus said, then Andrew walked in and said, hey, "But there is a lad that has two fish and five loaves. What is it among this many?" Oh. Jesus said, "I am fire." Hey, hey. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey, I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Jesus said, give it to me. He, the fire, the light, the glory, the lifted up the soup, the bread. Now the supernatural kicked in. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey, I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. That's how you know that something has happened. That song, son, I heard it once. They didn't turn me like alcohol. It was like I drank three bottles of, what's that whiskey? The one I, I always preach, Jack Daniels. <laughs> Something turned inside. Man, where did this guy get this revelation? I am fire. I am glory. I am light. I'm the supernatural. I am. Jesus took up the bread. The Bible said he looked up to heaven and said, Father, I thank you. I am. Bread began to multiply. And five loaves and two fish fed 5,000. Why are you complaining about the little you have? It can multiply by the supernatural. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey, I am light. Uh -huh. I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Uh -huh. I am light. Yes. I am glory, oh. The supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Yes, Lord. I am light. Yes, Lord. I am glory. Oh, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Oh, I am light. Yes, I am glory. Oh, the supernatural. Do you believe it, church? That two fish and five loaves in your hand will multiply today. I said that small bottle of oil in your house will multiply today. I said it shall multiply today in the name of Jesus. Church, let's not complain like the world. No, we are not like them. We are like our father. We are made in his image. Everything he did from Genesis to Revelation, he said you should do the same. Are we here, church? I said, everything you saw God do, you can do. 
If Jesus walked on water, you can walk on water. If Jesus raised the dead, you can raise the dead. You are not hearing me. If Jesus multiplied five loaves and two fish, you can multiply it. You can. Don't let anything make you feel like you are too small. I think this dominion mandate is more of us, not even of God. Just something about this mandate God gave us as the theme of this conference is to awaken us to who we are. Because many of us are operating below, far below where we should be. Far. I'm not even there yet. I can't stand here and tell you that I'm all that. No, it's not true. There's still a lot in me that needs to come out. There's still a lot. There's still a lot. And we need to begin to meet presidents. President of the, the, the uh, um, UAE, Odo Sheikh. Meet the president of America and preach the gospel to them. I still need to meet the president of Russia. I still need to meet the president of China. There is a lot that is still in me that needs to come out. Are we here, church? Yeah. Church, you, you listen to me. I am praying that this dominion mandate does something to you that will change you forever and even generations to come. Generations. You can't remain the same in a church like this. No. Uh -uh. No. The biggest mistake you will ever make is for Satan to pull you out of a church like this. I'm telling you. Because you have a, first and foremost, you are in a genuine church where there is no negative agenda. There is no ulterior motive. I am not here to make money. Believe me. Be church, believe me. I see. Before I became a pastor, let me tell you my story. Like Paul said to them, he said, you know, if there is anybody to brag concerning the things that have been achieved in the, in the physical, he said, I am the one, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, concerning the law, I was blameless. He said, I was, I was zealous for God to the point I was killing Christians. Are we together? Before I became a pastor, I was a millionaire, not jokes. Physical, not spiritual. Because some people are spiritually millionaires. No, I was not a spiritual millionaire. I was a physical, somebody shall physical. Yeah. Physical millionaire. So that I came into ministry, I didn't come here because I need money. There are pastors that, yes, they came into ministry because of money. They want money. That's not why I'm here. I am here so that your story must change. And the reason why people keep blessing me is because they see that this man's heart is for our good. Look at somebody. God spoke to her. Go and bless apostle with a thanksgiving offering. And just after that, menstrual cycle that ceased for six years began to flow. Just like that. Another person will be saying, these Nigerians, why should I go give him money? And then your menstrual cycle ceases. Forever. And you're saying, God is not moving. God is not in this church. But it is disobedience. Are, you, are we here, church? When people are... See, church, when you are in a place like this, all you need to do is take what is taught you serious. Take it serious. If you listen to my... You cannot listen to me one year fully and not add all these people that fly in the night time and all these people that walk in the air to eat. Just listen to me first. Hear my messages one year and so nothing changes in your life. I'm telling you, it's impossible. It's, it's, I'm literally telling you it's impossible. Because before I come here, the first thing I do is go before God. Lord, what would you like me to say to your people? Lord, tell me. One hour, two hours, three hours. Four hours. And then God will say something. So when I come here to stand, I tell you what God is saying right now. Not what I'm saying. What God is saying. Church, please, I want us to wake up. We cannot struggle like this forever. No, this is not what God made you to be. Uh -uh. From the foundation of the earth, you are greater than where you are. I'm telling you. Can you just imagine if Steve Jobs died without us having Apple? 
apple would have been in the grave. You didn't hear me. Are you hearing what is coming out of my mouth this morning? Just imagine if Bill Gates died without Microsoft. You and I today will be in darkness without Microsoft. Are we together? I, I, I am telling somebody here, a greater than Microsoft is inside you. You are not listening to me. A greater than Apple is inside you. I told you guys I was in the United States and they told me that uh, Amazon made six billion in one day. Something, my brain scattered. I had to rearrange it. Six billion dollars. That is, multiply it. South Africa, eh? Today, Amazon is worth one trillion dollars. Amazon is, is, is worth more than South Africa. One human being's company is worth more than the whole nation, including me and you. If they add all of us together, we are not up to Amazon. From our president to Oppenheimer to the Robert to the first 20 billionaires, the banks, not all of us are not up to Amazon. One trillion dollars. Amazon is worth 1.1 trillion US dollars, not Zimbabwean dollars. And then you tell me, if a fallen man like Jeff Bezos can do that, what about me? Jeff Bezos is still under the fallen Adam. He has the nature of Adam. Now I am, I have the nature of God because I have received Jesus. And you tell me that I should just watch them. No, I am not here to watch others. I was not born to watch others. I came here to make things happen. Are you hearing me, church? I came here for the supernatural. I came here to change my environment. I came here to alter the course of men and women and their destinies. Are you here, church? People will tell me, from the day I met you, my life never remained the same. You can take what you have for granted. I can live with somebody in the same house and it will take me for granted and somebody else, I meet the person, his life changes. Meanwhile, the person closest to me is not experiencing it because he only seen is the earthen vessel. That's why I don't see. Paul said, we know no man after what? The flesh. Listen, you don't know what you are made of. Believe me, believe me. I can tell you now. A company greater than Amazon is sitting here. In this crowd, I, I can bet my life on it. I can bet my life on it. A bank greater than NetBank is sitting here in this, office, in this place. Please, just, just wake up. I pray that the light will shine. That every veil Satan has used to cover you, that God will, 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 will tear them to pieces and that the light will shine. Let the light be switched on for you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will begin to think different. You will act different. You behave different. I go to nations. I'm in church. I like I said, I don't want to tell some of my stories so that it doesn't look like I'm bragging. You, you enter a place, you know who you are. By the time you arrive, they look at you and they wonder, okay, this guy, you're black, you're this. But when you open your mouth, huh, you are talking like you are the owner of the place. Believe me. I told you guys, we went to Dubai. My wife, the, the immigration officer, you know those Dubai guys are so pompous. They are, you know, because they have too much money. Those immigration guys drive Lamborghinis and Rolls Royce. He stamped something on my wife's passport in the last, last page, the visa. My wife said, why did you do that? You don't know your job. Ah! The guy, he looked me in the face. My wife walked away. He said, nobody has ever spoken to me like this. Because my wife knows who she is. Is it your Dubai? You can trash your Dubai. I don't care. She didn't go there. No. I remember <laughs> my late wife. We were at the U.S. Embassy the first time we got U.S. visa. So, you know, then is a glass. I don't know how it is now because now I no longer go there. I just send my passport 
they just renew 10 years. I no longer go. In fact, to the point now where I send orders. I send their, I say, I'm traveling with this person. That's how many people in this church got visa. So, <laughs> so we got there. There is a glass, thick glass. They say my late wife should pick up the phone. He asked my late wife, uh, your husband is Nigerian. How did you meet him? You know what my late wife said? It's none of your business. Ah! The guy, the shock in his face, an American, the shock in his face. He could not believe. You know when you see somebody in disbelief. But Mina, I was desperate for American visa, I won't lie. My wife was not. Hmm. Let me be honest though. It was my first time. So immediately, my response, I grabbed the phone from my wife. I said, I will answer you. <laughs> I am fire. <laughs> I am light. <laughs> I am glory, the supernatural. I answered the phone. Oh. I said, no, this is how we met. And before this woman denied me U.S. visa. <laughs> you know when I started praying to travel to America, when I was in Bible school, I used to pray, Lord, I would, man, you know those years we watch movies, watch Hollywood, watch, you know, you just think that when you get to America, you start picking dollars from the airport. Story, story, story. Let me bust your bubble. It's a lie. America is so normal like here. If I you South Africans, if you go to America, you won't be surprised. It's like your environment. There is no big deal. Uh-oh, you're not hearing me. So I answered the phone. But you see, there is a level of confidence that you have when you know who you are. My late wife was not desperate for America. Neither is my new wife desperate for Dubai. She could talk to them like that. That's how God wants you to act. You shouldn't be desperate. Some of you, look, that you are beautiful. God gave you powerful figure. Your shape is one in a million. That does not mean you should take that shape and go to all the beds of men. What God is saying is use that shape. I gave it to you. Use it to attract men to Christ. Uh -uh, you didn't say amen. Because that's the mistake many women are making. They think, oh, I'm beautiful. And they start worshipping themselves. Go to mirror, chaka, underwear, chaka. Put it on social media. Jesus is on my side. How is Jesus on your side with underwear? Are you okay? No. God gave it to you. Listen, it's a gift. Hey, hello, ladies. Did God, did you pray that God make you the way you are? Did anybody say, oh, I'm believing God, I'm going to come out handsome? From No, you didn't. As I am, I don't go to gym. I am naturally built like this. I go everywhere I go, people ask me, which gym do you go to? I don't. I went to gym once. Now, lady felt sorry for me. I said, I'm not going. <laughs> I came from gym to the office. I was in the car, sleeping. Now, lady came. Daddy, are you okay? I said, I just came from gym. Hey, yeah, uh, shame. I said, ah, no. Uh -uh. My daughter is telling me shame. I said, no, this gym, wait first. <laughs> no, in Jesus' name, I will not be told shame by my daughter. Are we here, church? It's a gift given to me. Now, it's not given to me. Listen, whether you like it or not, Mina, I know I'm attractive. If you, if you don't like it, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I know I am. But what I'm using that attraction to do is to bring people to the Lord. Listen, don't use, don't waste your gift on nonsense. Don't waste it. Many young men think because they are well built, so it's time to sleep with Sibongile, sleep with uh, uh, patients, sleep with everybody in the street. No, the reason God, every gift is to glorify God. Whatever gift, there are people God gave the gift to cook. There are people God gave gift of inner beauty. I told you here, church, inner beauty is more than outward look. They are women, they are beautiful, have the best figure ever. They, beauty attracts, but beauty never keeps. Uh -uh, you don't hear me. I've seen men live 
a pretty woman go sleep with a helper. Beauty does not keep. It is inner character, inner beauty. For some of you, you may have that and you are despising yourself. That's a gift. You know how many people character has destroyed? No character. They are gifted. Many gifted people don't have character. Many. Most of these singers you see that sing everywhere. They finish singing, they go and smoke. I went to one concert in uh, what's that Soweto Theater? Is it Soweto Theater? Is there anything like that? Somewhere, yeah, in Soweto. And fortunately, I was privileged to call, to be called, to come and pray. And I went to the back because they bring you through, through the back stage. And as I finished praying, I walk out. The people that were backing up and singing, some of them, they were drinking whiskey. I am fire. <laughs> I am glory. I can't believe it. Many gifted people, character is a problem. Character. So their gift will take them out, but character will disgrace them. You see a man that is so, has so much inte intellect and wisdom, God will lift him up to a certain position in the in the marketplace, but he can't control his, his pants. Every woman he sees, he then goes and sleeps with the CEO's wife. Many people are like that. No character. But you see, character is a gift. Can you imagine? I mean, look at, I, I, I pastor you, church. I know the kind of power and dominion I have over as your leader. There are pastors who have taken such power and begin to sleep with young women in church. Amen, somebody. That's bad character. People can today trust me. They can, people will send their wife to come and see me for counseling. They're not afraid because they know this man will not go close. There are pastors you can't send your wife. Oh, don't try that everywhere. Oh. Brothers, I'm telling you now. It's not every pastor you will say, my wife, go and see pastor, let him pray for you. Don't try it. Not every pastor is like that. People are just careless. Careless with their lives. Young ladies, every man you meet is not meaning that you go to bed. No, keep yourself. Let a man see you as a woman of character. You meet a man, you tell him, listen, if he wants to sleep, no, we don't do it. I'm a child of God, I'm born again. I don't sleep until I marry. That man will take you serious. Because men are looking for women like that. Serious men. Not anyhow men. Go and marry one idiot and, you know, by the time he sleeps with you, he moves over to the next one. Amen, somebody. You will not marry an idiot. Say, uh -uh, you didn't say amen to that prophecy. You will not. I'm telling you. Somebody was telling me, he says, I mean, before I married my husband, I, I said, I don't even know why you went, you went ahead. He said, before I married my husband, he has cheated on me so many times. Ah, and then you went ahead for that wedding. Hey, who bewitched you? No. Mm -mm. We are godly people. We are men and women of character. I don't work in a company to steal from them. You didn't hear me. If others are stealing, you don't steal. Okay, no amen from here. If others are stealing, you don't change figures. We are not thieves. If others are selling drugs, you are not a drug dealer. That thing is damaging people's lives. Everything you must do that, that destroys humanity, God is against it. That's why if you are here, you, are, you own a bottle store. Close it down. Start another business. Pray that God will give you another business. Not bottle store. We don't drink alcohol here. So why would you go and sell alcohol to others? Uh -uh, you didn't hear me. You don't sell drugs. You don't sell cigarettes. You have a shop. Take those things away. Uh, this church is not happy. Character. Let's build character. We are people of integrity. You give me something to keep, when you come back, I will give it back to you. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. You can't be messing with people. I mean, there's still people here who are chasing people's wives. In our previous church, somebody went to our pastor and said, the Lord told him that my late wife is his wife. In church, not outside church, not nightclub, inside church. You'll be surprised, some of you men, you are treating your wife anyhow. One brother is believing God that you die so that he can marry her. <laughs> That's a revelation for somebody. That woman you are treating anyhow. woman you you taking for granted you know we just take each other for granted you know christians we do that all the time we just take each other for granted you take people for granted not knowing listen look at your neighbor look at look, just look somebody in the eye say listen after this message you better know me now you better make friends with me now because after this message, you may not recognize me again. And at that time, I will be too high for you to get my phone number. So collect my phone number now. Are you here? Yeah. Collect my phone. Are you here, somebody? Collect my phone. You better. Uh, I don't know who I came to preach to this morning. But I know that there are kings here. I said there are kings here. They are presidents here, presidents of corporations, CEOs of banks. I'm talking to men and women that are high profile in the society. Are you here, church? So, so don't take don't take each other for granted. You don't know who we are. You don't. Those people who took me for you know there was church. Hey, I have two minutes. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted us to pray. There was a girl. Can I tell you some of my stories? There was a girl I wanted to marry. Kabaya gada gada gada. Pretty girl. Ah, yeah. We were both in the youth. I was 24. I like this girl. Ay, Jesus. And the mother loves me, but she doesn't love me. So in those years in our church, when you, you meet a girl in church that you want to marry, you don't talk to the girl. The law in our church is that there is a pastor in charge of marriage like Pastor Benji. His name is Reverend Kemko. So you go and meet him and then you tell him, I've seen a sister. He will call the sister and say, somebody has come for you. Hey. So I went to Reverend Kemko. I said, hey, this so-and-so sister. The sister came to see Reverend Kemko. Then Reverend Kemko said, brother Felix has seen you. You know what she said to Kemko? Tell him to go and pray again. Hey. I am fire, <laughs> I am light, <laughs> I am glory, oh, the supernatural. Now, church, that sister denied me and declined me. Today, she could have been flying all over the world. Because then, when I was in the youth, she didn't see an apostle Felix. She saw brother Felix. You are sitting down beside the CEO. You are not seeing them. You are seeing sister Sibongile. And let me talk to this side. You are not seeing the CEO of a bank. You are seeing brother Larry. Am I talking to somebody here? Church, you don't know who you are sitting by. You have no idea who you are sitting with. Something will unleash in your life from today. I say something is breaking forth from your life from today. Something is coming out of you that will change this nation, that will change Africa, that will change the globe. I want us to pray. But before we do that, please sit down. The service is over. Let me just make this call. Every head bowed, all eyes closed. Nobody looking around, nobody moving. Please, I beg you. Just be patient. You are here this morning. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. This is a serious moment. You are here this morning and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. You are still attached to the first Adam. You have the fallen nature inside of you. And now you have heard this message and you say, Apostle, I didn't know that I have to connect to the second Adam. 
The Bible actually calls him the last Adam because there is not going to be another one. He has paid it all for you. He paid the price for you to be restored. You say, Apostle, I would like to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want this second birth. I want a relationship with God. If that is you, you want me to pray for you, raise your hand where you are. Raise up your hand. Thank you, ma'am. Raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord is calling so many of you. The moment has come. And God is giving you the opportunity to give your life over to him. The choir sang this morning, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. Who wants to be God's forever? Raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Keep your hands up. Keep it up. Don't bring it down. Somebody else says, Apostle, I once gave my life to Christ, but somehow I'm backslidden. And today, I want to make it right. I, I, I kind of took a back seat. Something happened. I'm not serious with God anymore. I backslided. I went back to the things I never used to do anymore. Today, I would like to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, join these people and raise your hand quickly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you who are raising your hand, do me a favor. I want you to stand up where you are. Stand up quickly. Stand up. Stand up. Don't be ashamed, please. Every head bowed or eyes closed. Stand up. You raised your hand. Stand up. Stand up. God is calling for you today. This is a great opportunity Jesus is giving you. He said, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If any man will open, I will come in and make my abode with him, saith the Lord. Stand up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Don't sit. If you know you raised your hand, please stand up. Or some of you are still deciding, if I were you, I will reject the devil today. You can't stay under a curse, under the curse. Jesus has redeemed you. He has paid the price. Thank you. Now I want you to do me another favor. Please, can you take your Bible, your bag, your personal belonging and step out from where you are. Please come and meet me and the pastors here in front. Please come. 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 Come on. Come on, church. Come on. Come on, church. Come on. Keep clapping as they keep coming. Oh, my God. Somebody celebrate Jesus for these souls. Come on. Come on. Come on. They are still coming. They are still coming. They are still coming. My God, my God, my God, my God. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know what I want to say to you? If all of you here are the reason we came to church today, we gathered here today, it was completely worth it. I want you to bow your heads and just pray this prayer with me. Mean it with all your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I thank you that you died for me. You were hung on the cross. And you were buried and on the third day you rose from the dead for my sake I now receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior forgive me all of my sins and my past and I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life Satan I reject you devil I denounce you and I make a choice to follow Jesus as a disciple all the days of my life thank you father for saving me today in Jesus name amen wow 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 as simple as this prayer is it has altered so many things in your life I want you to close your eyes as the church prays for you. Stretch your hands towards them. 
Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for these souls. The Bible says that no man cometh to Jesus except the Father draws him. Therefore, Father, we return the glory for, to you for all these wonderful people that you have brought into the kingdom. Now, Lord, upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the resurrection, the Bible says, whosoever sins will remit is remitted. We therefore declare their sins forgiven. Father, wash them with the blood of Jesus. Wash away their sins and cast it away as far as the east is from the west. And throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Father, we declare that their past is erased. For if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, Lord, I break every curse of the devil, every curse of the law, every curse of Satan is broken. Every curse of ancestry is broken out of your life. And I speak the blessing of Abraham into your spirit, man. And declare, may you receive grace today to serve God acceptably all the days of your life. Receive grace for the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the church say, Amen. Congratulations. My God. My God. Now, just one more thing I want you to do. Go with our sister right there. We want to take your name and your phone number so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision that you have made today. Please, just one or two minutes. Go with them right there. God bless you, church. Come on, come on. Let's celebrate. Come on, church. Somebody give Jesus praise. Come on. Come on, come on. It is the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel that men attend to the Lord. My God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right, do you have an offering for Jesus? Amen. Let's give him an offering because I want us to pray. Amen. All right, lift up your tithes, your offering. Those of you who made commitment for the transport, please remember to always give your transport seed. Um, as we conclude on the property we are buying, I'm also going to probably do a seed towards that. I want everybody to be a part of it. God is increasing this church, and as God is enlarging us, so is your life being enlarged. Amen. Amen. Give us, never lose. You don't lose when you give to God at all, at all, at all. God will never take anything from you that he will not give you back. Are we here together? Bring out your tithes, your offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. We want to honor you, Father, for this privilege. This opportunity that we have as your people to give to you. Lord, how can we give to God? Lord, you're too big for us to give anything. Father, we are too small to give to you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The word and they that dwell therein belongs to you. The choir sang that we are yours. Even us, we all belong to you. Therefore, Father, this morning we have come to honor you and to love on you with our offerings. Receive it, Father. Receive it, Lord, according to your principles. You said, O oh God, that we should give and it shall be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Will you cause men to give unto our bosom? Therefore, Lord, as we give this sacrificial seed today, as we release our tithes and offering today, I pray, Father, for relationships to open up in our life that will be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, give your offerings. Choir. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want us to pray. Church, the first prayer we are going to pray, just please, I know it's 12 o'clock exactly now. I want us to pray for this nation. And I want us to pray for the United States. God gave me this instruction. He says, pray for these two nations. As a transition that is going on, is no, it's not by coincidence that these two nations are going to be transiting into new governments or whatever it is, retain the old government or transit into a new government. And there is a reason why these two nations, God asked us to pray for them because of the agenda of God in these two nations. Let me tell you, these two nations are in the market for sale. Are you hearing what I'm saying? South Africa and America are where? And they are going to go to the highest bidder. And unfortunately, in the physical, the people that have the power and the influence and the money are the wrong people. But we are going to say, Lord, by your mercy, intervene. Intervene. Are you ready? Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up South Africa into your hands. We lift up the United States of America into your hands. And we pray for these two nations in this season of transition. Father, stretch forth your hand and let your will be done in these two nations. Let your will be done in these two nations. Establish your kingdom in these two nations. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for the United States of America. I pray, Father, for South Africa. Lord, these two nations are going through election this year. Lord, they are in a season of transition. We pray, Father, that your hand be released. Let your hand be released. Let your mighty hand be released. Oh, God Almighty, let your will be done in these two nations. My Father, let your kingdom be established. Let your kingdom be established. Let your kingdom be established. We thwart the agenda of Satan in the name of Jesus. We paralyze, we destroy the agenda of Satan for these two nations. I curse the agenda of Satan. Somebody pray. Pray. Say pray for the peace of Jerusalem in the city where you inhabit. In the nation where you inhabit, for in the peace of it, you will have your own peace. We declare peace in South Africa. Every agenda to sell this nation to ungodliness, to sell this nation, my God, we thwart it today. We scatter it now. I scatter. I scatter. I scatter. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now I want you to place your two hands on your belly. Place, place your two hands on your belly. You are going to pray this prayer, dangerous prayer, that I want you to release for yourself. Lord, say after me, say Lord, like you are serious, say Lord, every treasure, every potential, every talent, every gift that is in me, I command you now, come forth, come out, come forth, come out, in the name of Jesus, break out in prayer, brade koshada. Mande koko sobe, berekotem delikato, brate koshaya, ayabakataya, 
Mata braga baya da braga da. Rebado peke te peke tos. Empre te ke se ke te. My God, every potential, every treasure, every gift, every talent that is inside me today that has not found expression. Come out! Come forth! Come out! Come forth! Come out! Come forth! Come out! In the name of Jesus. Ayayaya baragada. Rabada baragada. Rabada gabragada. Rabada baragada. Brado kosom de keto. El brado kosom de le keto. Pare que te pedi ale barados. El brada gabasada. Rada bayada bababa. Jesus. Let it come out. Let it come out. Let it come forth. Come forth. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Ashete ke liga brada. Rebodo bonde pregados. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Ibrata kapaya. Maya da brande koshata yaba. Barade kose preketosa. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hand on your belly. Say, Lord, everything in me that is supposed to contribute to my future, to my life, to contribute wealth to my life, begin to break out now. Begin to break forth now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Madabagata. Redo poco son de que dos La voz de que broque dos la cadaya Para que te pocho pan de que te que le quede My father, in the name of Jesus Everything inside me That is supposed to contribute To my future Contribute to my life My destiny That is supposed to bring wealth Bring resources into my life Break forth now Break forth Break forth Break forth Come out in the name of Jesus. Masha na Somebody pray. Pray for the breakthrough. Somebody pray. is in me that is the key to my next level everything in me that the world needs today I command you come out come forth in the name of Jesus open your mouth and break out my God everything that you have buried inside me everything you have placed inside me everything that is inside my womb inside my spirit lord that is supposed to bless the world that the world needs today i command it to come forth everything that is inside me that is key to my next level come out come out come forth in the name of jesus Jesus Let it come out Let it come out Whatsoever is the key To my next level That is inside me I command you come forth I command you break out Break out Manifest in the name of Jesus Reto kezi bragapaya Prada bashanda bragada Para de keze breketok Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands and stretch them towards this altar. Lord Jesus, I came before you this morning to ask you what I should tell your people. And you told me to preach this message. Lord, 
seated here is greatness every single one of them greatness Lord therefore as one sent by the Holy Ghost as your hand are stretched forth to this altar I command every treasure every talent every gift every potential that God has placed inside you that the world is in need of I command them now come out come out break forth manifest in the name of Jesus whatever is locked up on the inside of you that is your key to the next level of your life I command them now as I speak to them you will hear the voice of authority every single thing gift potential talent that treasure that god has put inside you that is your key to your next level that the world will pay you millions and billions for i locate them by the holy ghost i command them now come forth come forth come forth come forth God said to the earth, let the earth break forth. Now I speak to you, earth. Your body is earthen vessel. I speak to your body now. Every treasure that is inside you. He said, let the earth break forth. Ah, I'm about to prophesy dangerous prophecy. My God, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the son of the living God, I command everything God has put inside you. Now, in the name of Jesus, bring forth! I command you to bring forth banks. Bring forth companies. Bring forth conglomerates. Bring forth ministries. Bring forth buildings. Bring forth employment. Bring forth! Bring forth! In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray everything that anybody has lost here I command light whatever you have lost Holy Ghost everything power my God the fire of God is here help those under the anointing everyone here who has lost anything my God today that is still out there looking for you. I command the light of God to locate them now. Let it come back to you a thousandfold. Come back now. Please help them. Jesus. You will not leave this service the same way you came. May the hand of the Lord come upon you now. May your destiny find expression. May your glory shine forth. May your star shine forth. May your destiny find expression. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just like the wise men located the star of Jesus. And followed it until they met Jesus. So shall wise men look for you. Wealthy men will look for you. Billionaires will look for you. They will look for you. They will follow your star till they find you. In the name of Jesus. I declare you will never be ordinary. I rebuke the spirit of mediocrity. I rebuke the spirit of average. I rebuke poverty out of your life. From today, I command men and women that will run ministry, that will run companies in billions and in millions, I release them out of this congregation. I unleash you today to the world. I unleash you by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I release you now. You will be a sign and a wonder. You shall be a sign and a wonder to the world. Holy Spirit, thank you. We give you glory. Lift up your hands and give God thanks. Hey, my God, what a service. Give him glory. Give him glory. 
you can sing that song. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Yeah, I am light. Mm -hmm. I am glory, the supernatural. Come on. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, the supernatural. I am fire. I am light. I am glory, the supernatural. I, I am, am fire. fire. Come on. I, I am light. light. Let's go. I, I am glory. The supernatural. I Come on. I, I am fire. fire. I, I am light. Oh yes. I, I am glory. The supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Hey. I am light. Yes. I am glory. The supernatural. Come on. I am fire. Yes, Lord. I am light. Oh yes. I am glory. Supernatural, come on! I am fire. Oh yes, I am light. Yes, Lord, I am glory. Supernatural, let's sing it. I am fire. Let's go. I am light. Oh yes, I am glory. Supernatural, I am fire. I am light. I am glory. One more time. Hey, I am fire. Oh yes, I am light. Oh yes, I am glory. Supernatural. One more time. I am fire. I am fire. I am glory. Supernatural. That is who you are. You are living here as fire. You are living here as light. You are living here as glory. You are living here as the supernatural. You will never do any ordinary thing again. Everything from today you do will be supernatural. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord be with you. This week shall be the best week of your life. You will return here with mouth-watering testimonies. And the Lord increase you more and more, even you and your children. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you for coming. If today is your first time of coming to church,